All right, Shalom. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutations and many blessings to the elect Akiam across the four corners of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. And I wanted to go into this lesson on being apt to teach. All right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to pull out that word actually apt because um, as I was just looking through my notes, you know, you have certain thoughts that might come to your head. You want to do a little lesson on you jot it down and go back to it. So I was looking through it, you know, it, um, you know, just it harped on me to go into this, man, because it's very important, especially within the times that we're living in right now. All right. Now, let's say, for example, um, you know, more brothers come to the camp and listen. You have to be skillful and understand the word in order to teach it. You have to be confident. You have to be bold. And um, when you go into the accounts of Yahweh and also too, when the apostles, the ancient apostles was on the scene, people were astonished at the amount of knowledge, wisdom and understanding and confidence that those men had. All right. They even made the statement saying these men have no letters. All right. Pretty much they didn't have a degree or anything like that. But within it comes studying the word. And then when it comes to studying the word, you teach the word. All right. That's why, um, you know, we, we, we always stress, you know, of course, you know, being babes, you're going to you're going to recite what you hear. You're going to be parrots. But through much toiling, through much studying, you get to the point when you become confident. And then when you when you teach and that's how people are edified by the teaching through the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh hearing that confession of our Lord. All right. So I'm going to start off on the scripture here. And I don't want to make it long, more than likely a quick hit because I got a clock in the work here shortly. But this is Second Timothy, chapter two, verse 24. And it reads in the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Apt to teach patient. OK, so let's go into this word apt really quick because I wanted to go into this. All right. And he's given given traits of a servant of the Lord. All right. And these are certain traits. And this is a key trait, all right? When you go into that word, that word uh, apt to teach. Mm -hmm. Strong's G, 1317. Didacticas. Didacticas. Yeah, I was going to let him do it because I would have I stunk up the field trying to pronounce that. So when you go into this word, this word is apt and skillful in teaching. In order to be skillful in anything, it takes repetition and it takes practice. Mm -hmm. All right. And what do we do out on the highways and byways? We 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 uh we rehearse, we practice. What do we do when we do lessons? We practice. All right, amongst one another. Okay? Help build each other up. But mainly that's how you you're skillful. And the brothers in um the brothers in DC, it was a it was a demon, an old testament demon that came out to those brothers' camp. And you can tell that man wasn't skillful in the word because he was tripping over milk trying to bring up certain certain examples isaiah 53 talking about that's talking about israel there's so many scriptures that the brothers went into that went over that nigga's head all right but the reason why i'm bringing this example up and it's just an example so like if you hear that noise in the background um you know i work in a uh, fucking airfield air air force base you know let that pass man it's satan all right so pretty much the reason why I'm using that as an example, those individuals was apt to teach. And let's say that guy that was talking about that Old Testament was going to any younger brothers that didn't have any understanding. They could have they could have they could have been given up to Satan within that. But with those brothers being skillful within the word, I believe it was Elder Peshai that was teaching the man when teaching. Hey, you know, brothers understood. And that demon ended up fleeing afterwards, man. But again, I'm just using that as an example. You got another example within our camp. Um, Jake came up inquiring about the virgin birth and the elder Yashawamba explained it, broke it down. All right. Now, again, that's an example in order to be able to do these things, explain these things for these people that ask questions to receive understanding. They actually have to be skillful within the word. And within that, it takes repetition and it takes studying. All right. And that's what a servant of the Lord is going to do. You're going to study. You're going to teach because the more you teach, that goes into repetition. You remember certain things. You remember what certain words mean in the Hebrew. You go to the roots to see what they're actually talking about. Look at the Christian doctrine. Look at the Christian church, man. Best believe when you watch how they do things, man, there ain't no teacher set up in there. 
they give you just a feel good message and, and you pay the money to pass the pork chop and you keep it moving, you know. But with us being servants of the Lord, we need to be apt to teach. All right. We need to be skillful. All right. We need to be seasoned with salt. And the scriptures talk about to be seasoned with salt. Let your speech be seasoned. OK, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to continue reading. It says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. And that's pretty much going into um, being apt to teach, because, again, we went into that word. It means to be skillful in order to be to instruct somebody within something. You have to be skillful within it to be able to instruct them on that, because a lot of times when you instruct somebody on things, you're instructing them based off your past experience you've been through and your upbringing, how you had to come up with whatever it is, whatever it is that you're instructing that individual. on. So it says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If the most high be pre, if the most high pre adventure will give them repetition, uh, give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that's what you've seen in that you've seen in D.C. when that nigga came up, man. He didn't want to repent. He said he didn't have to repent pretty much. He said he didn't have to because the Lord already forgave his sins with no sacrifice. Now, a man's going to say that if he's unskillful in the word. Ultimately, we know if the spirit's not dealing with him. But that nigga was unskillful. That's why he was fumbling all over the place. He had the audacity to say, I don't even want to. He, he, he pretty much <laughs> he pretty much um, blasphemed the Holy Spirit. All right. I don't even want to say the word he said about the Holy Spirit, but he blasphemed the Holy Spirit, which we already know. You can't do that. Niggas going to die. He might be dead right now as we speak. Now, again, that this lesson ain't wholeheartedly going into that, but I'm just using that as an example how those brothers was apt to teach. And you had a man that opposed himself to the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and he didn't acknowledge the truth. All right? That didn't stop those brothers out there from teaching, though. I can guarantee you brothers was edified. Verse 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. All right? So with you being apt to teach, You'll be able to convert sinners into repentance out of Israel, that is. All right. And ultimately be after teach, you know, the spirit has to be dealing with you to be able to to be able to reveal those things unto you. So those individuals that wake up mm -hmm. can be converted and go over to the right side, man. You know, before this truth, we was walking off all over the place, drinking different doctrines, different wines and all of that until uh, until the apostles came on the scene. Which were apt to teach. They were skillful. And now look at the fruit that you see. Brothers doing videos three a week. All right. How it was in byways, every big city, small cities all over the world. Reason why? Because those men were apt to teach. The ancient apostles who actually walked with Yahweh and watched the things that he did. All right. Yahweh was made that example. He was skillful in the word. He was the word. He is the word. And he mm -hmm. gave that that comforter into those men. And they believed and they taught the word. And you're seeing the fruits of that right now. But if none of those men were apt to teach, you wouldn't see what you see right now. So being apt to teach is very important. You can't just spew out stuff. You can't just read scriptures and break it down without studying it. All right. You have to study this stuff before you go into it. You can't just like a like a uh, like Apostle Elder, like Elder Apostle Kabar said, man, you can't just do shows for no reason. You know, you got to make sure that it's edifying. Now, we know the order was out to do three shows. All right. We get that. That don't just mean just all oh, you're at your you're at your limit, not limit, but you're at the uh, time frame. And you, you only got one video done. And you just throw out some bullshit. No, man. Pray to the Lord. All right. But if you don't got no ideas, repent. And make sure that the spirit of the Lord goes harder for you the next week to balance that out, you know. But all in all, like Elder Apostle Kabar said, we got to pretty much we got to be apt to teach, man. All right. If we apt to teach and skillful in the word, mm -hmm. the lessons that you're going to do are going to be edifying. And whether one brother hears it or whether 10 brother hears it or whether 100 or 1000, whoever, man, at the end of the day, it was it was edifying to that individual that heard it. All right. That actually that it actually sat with. He re resonated with. Of course, people, you got scoffers. They're not getting edified. Their job is to scoff. But if you're skillful mm -hmm. in the word, you know, you can edify a brother and also being skillful in the word. Scoffers try to come at you and, and, and they're naysayers and say certain things and blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And you can say certain things to cut them. Now, again, this ain't just about cutting people. But hey, that's part of the that's part of the business we in. All right. 
like being skillful with a sword, man. You practice just in case somebody somebody tries to come up against you. It's self-defense. Mm -hmm. All right. The scriptures are called a sword for a reason. We got to be able to defend ourselves if an opposer of the gospel comes up. That's why you have to. That's why you have to um, preach the gospel. You know. That's why you got to do this, man. Make your whore forehead hard against their foreheads. Coming against that, got to be within his word. All right. Got one more scripture I'm going to end it off on. All right. And this is actually um, mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, study to show thyself approved unto the most high. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly divided the word of truth. All right. So we have to study to show ourselves approved of the most high. All right. That way, when that time comes also, that knowledge, wisdom and understanding, that knowledge shall be the stability of the time. The reason why you have that knowledge, of course, first and foremost, the spirit dealing with you, but that working within you to study and to understand the word of the Lord. You know, look at King David. He was a man that was after the Lord's heart. You just think he was just sitting down. No, he studied the word. He was in the word. You know, look at all the ancient kings of Israel. You know, it's actually a law when you go into it, man. In order to be a king, you have to meditate day and night within the scriptures and you got to study it. That's how you get closer to the Lord. And that's how you're able to judge your people. And what's the Lord doing? He's raising up a nation full of kings and priests. You know, let me get that in Revelation 5. This is Revelation 5 and 10. And he hath made us unto our power, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, in order to do that, to be made that king and be made that priest, what do they have to do? They have to have understanding of the word. They have to be skillful within the word to be able to guide and direct the people in order to rule. And within the, within the Lord putting his spirit in us, he's setting up future leaders right now. And we're supposed to execute and practice those things that we practice, these things that we preach, practice these things that we learn so we can actually be able to rule. But all of this starts with experience and repetition, being skillful, being apt to teach. All right. Because the more apt to teach, it'll become second nature with certain things. All right. And where you learn from, you learn from the milk at first and then you go to the meat. All right. You first get in this thing. You ain't going to understand Ezekiel 17. You ain't going to understand Ezekiel 47. All right. You ain't going to understand Isaiah 63. You got to start off somewhere and throughout time. And again, time and repetition you'll get better to the point where you can teach somebody else that's under you. You can hold classes, do what you got to do. Of course, if the spirit's on that, you know, but again, I got a clock in the work. But again, I'm going to say this. We have to be apt to teach, man. All right. Skillful. Can't be no scrubs out here. The Heavenly Father is raising up leaders. All right. He's raising up future leaders. All right. Can't be stagnant in this thing. Within with us being part of this thing, we have to grow. All right. We can't just sit in the same spot and expect to have the same roles that we've had when we first got into the truth, you know. But I'm going to end it off with that. Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor and all glory due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations and many blessings mm -hmm. to the elect Akiam, the house of David, Bayat Dawada, kicking this word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom.